at home. Right. It's in a different notebook. It's in my Are we on there? We're on there. Okay. Okay, welcome to the Open Space and Ecology meeting of uh, Wednesday, March 12th, 2014. Um, show for the record that all current committee members are present, Kima, Glenn, myself, and Barbara. Um, so on the adoption of the agenda, um, there are, are there any items on the agenda that anybody would like to, are there, any, can we add items to the agenda, Stuart? You're not supposed to take action on them. Okay, but. I mean, you on. could if there's an emergency, if it's an urgency matter where it was something that was gonna come up before um, we could reschedule another one, you could add it. If there was something that came up in the last 72 hours, I mean, those are the kinds of things. Um, in reality, I'm pretty sure what we're doing is not going to raise the level of somebody wanting to Sue us. Okay. Well, the, there is an item I would like to add to the agenda. Okay. And it is an item that came up in the last 72 hours. Well, it's actually come up a lot lately. And um, I would like the committee to look at recommending to the city council a change in the building ordinance for the Brisbane Acres that allows an interior courtyard to count as part of the lot coverage. To not Currently, it does not count as part of the lot coverage. And I would like the committee to discuss amending that because it's in direct contrast and conflict with the whole Brisbane Acres ordinance about lot coverage. And it does directly impact open space and ecology because the whole reason that they have a limit on lot coverage is because of the sensitive habitat and the nature of the Brisbane Acres. And I feel that it is a bit of an emergency because the Brisbane City Council will be discussing the Ridgeline Ordinance and some of the other ordinances surrounding the Brisbane Acres um, in the very near future. Um, uh, now, it won't apply to the issue they have on the table right now because that's already right. done. I mean, I think what you could do is you could direct staff to, you could talk about it, not take an action, and put it on the next agenda for action. I'd How about that? Okay. I'd like to make a motion to add that if everyone feels it's appropriate, if staff feels it's appropriate. Yeah, I mean, I think if you talk about it and you direct staff and then we bring it back at the next meeting where we could agendize some kind of action. I think that would be the best way to handle it. So you're not taking an action tonight. So no one from the public would feel that they could not participate in the action of an item. Okay. Is there a second? I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we'll add that to the agenda. Um, and since we just discussed it, we might as well put it up at the top and get it over with. Um, and then on the update of the CAG, I am sorry, I did not bring my CAG minutes. Does anyone else have any, I mean, I can sort of tell you what happened, but I can't name names. I, it's all in my other notebook. I thought the CAG was on hiatus. No, it is not on hiatus. Okay. Um, so I will just minimally, but we'll have a more complete update, I think, at our next meeting. Or I can send an email with a more complete update. Unfortunately, I did not bring that notebook. Sure. I have too many notebooks. Um, I think maybe what you can do is that maybe you send it to us, Natalie and I, and then we can include it as part of an email out to everybody. Mm -hmm. Just remember that it's not for discussion if you receive it from us that don't talk with each other about what you read. Okay. Um, is there any other changes or additions to the agenda? <coughs> uh, okay. Glenn. Pardon? The only other thing was... Did you want to add Mary's letter to that? Oh, yeah. Oh. Wait, yeah. this? Or... No. Oh. The draft of the thank you letter to Mary. And actually, we should add thank you letters because we have a couple more. Yeah. And then there's just... I have an update, uh, an article that um, Ellen has sent me that I wanted to share and give to you to share. So I guess those are just kind of catch-up items. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? 
Um, no, it looks like a very full agenda. And yeah. Uh, I guess the only other thing was that didn't end up on the agenda, and it'll be agendized at, in the next meeting when Michael Avney hopefully joins us, is the rotation of the chair position. So... Um, and I know council recently voted on rotation of chairs. So at the next meeting when we do that, I'll have, we'll include whatever action they took so you know what their expectation of rotations are. Okay, and does it apply to committees as well as um, You know, and that's, if I was really on top of it, I'd be able to tell you, that's why I'm postponing it until you actually have to take action on it. Okay, but I'm bringing it up now so that each member, current member can think about it. You're thinking. That. Yeah. Will we get uh, information in the, like a packet before we get to the meeting? Or yes, thank you. Okay, because I mean we'd include it with the agenda. Okay. Yeah, because normally the succession would be Kima uh, as being vice chair if he wanted it, but it doesn't. You don't have to do the succession in that order or anything mm -hmm. like that. And he's a little. I feel like they. I was I was unaware of any formal succession. There isn't a formal succession in any in any of it, including who they choose as mayor. So I, it was just as, it's normally an expectation. So it's not a formal thing at all. You're and, actually secretly anointed Kima Bow. So yeah, you didn't know it, but you are chair next year. Both. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we'll discuss it I at know. the next meeting. Yes, but I yeah. want everyone to be thinking about the leadership of the group and and. Does someone want to step up to do that? The initiation ceremonies are really cool. Yeah. Okay. Is there an expense account? <laughs> <laughs> you mean how much you're willing to spend yeah, to the, support you know, the city? As, as much as you're willing to spend is what your expense account is. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so let's go on with the agenda. Yeah. Uh, so uh, do we have a move to adopt the agenda as, as amended? I'll move. I second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Um, oral communications for items not on the agenda. Yes, I'll actually speak. Okay. Um, the city of Brisbane is entering into an agreement with the city of Half Moon Bay pending a vote on Half Moon Bay City Council Tuesday night to provide interim city manager services to the city of Half Moon Bay. Their um, city manager had to leave um, rather quickly for personal reasons and the city of Brisbane is helping by providing an interim city manager which will be myself for 80% of my time. Yike. However, I have negotiated with my city manager in Brisbane to maintain being the lead staff person for the Open Space and Ecology Committee. Well, we always knew you loved us best, but Stuart, I'm like speechless what are we going to do without you i'll still be working with open space and ecology and i'll still be working on the budget for the city and other financial issues similar to that huh. and it, it's anticipated that you know they're going to go out and do a recruitment my anticipation is that their recruitment will probably take three to four months before they pick a permanent city manager are you going to participate in that recruitment process as a candidate you're going to ask me in public Okay. I would just miss you if uh, if you were successful, but I would be very happy for you. Thank you. I don't know. I mean, I, haven't, I, I do not predict the future like that. Finances, I predict the future. I don't predict it about those kinds of things. Fair enough. Wow. Yike. Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> the committee is in a state of shock. But well, you see, it's not for a discussion. It's we a have someone in the audience. Maybe she'd like to say something? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're up to oral communication, so anything you'd want to say that's not on the agenda. Um, but you have to speak up the microphone if you want to speak. Yeah. It's just so rare that we have anybody in the audience. That's yeah, we don't quite know what to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so please state your name. And um, Dominique Bocanegra. Lived here my whole life. Just graduated college in Hawaii and moved back. And... Mm -hmm. Trying to get involved more with Brisbane again, you know, the well, city. Aloha and welcome home. <laughs> Thank you, Aloha. Um, yeah, I'm just here to sit in and, you know, I printed out your guys' agenda and had some, you know, some things I'd like to talk about or hear about and hopefully I can help with, uh, help out somehow. 
And what specific things were you interested in? Um, I think the litter presentation to schools. I, you know, went to BES. I went to Litman. Was very involved in both of those. Um, so just some things, I guess, making it fun. You know, litter. How to prevent littering and recycling, and how to make it more fun for kids to to get active and want to do it. So. Oh, welcome. All right. Thank you. Actually, we are delighted. That's great. Okay. Um, the only other thing that I guess I would consider oral communications not on the agenda, or maybe it is, a, I don't know if you would consider it on the agenda or not, but Elena sent me this absolutely amazing article in the High Country News um, about Fallon, Nevada, and the problems with the pipeline and cancer clusters. Um, and this was published in... Uh, March 3rd, 2014. Oh, it's a new one then. Yeah, it's brand new. It's, it's a lengthy article, and it's relevant to the fuel storage and fire code changes. So should I save it for that part? Okay, I'll save it for that part. All right, update on the keg. How did the meeting? I went to the meeting, um, and there was a presentation, and it was several weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all of my notes, so I'm going to have to send it to you. But it was very interesting because it was about um, – you know what? I'm not going to paraphrase. I'll send you my notes. There's been a lot of water that's gone through the river since then. So basically, that's kind of not on the agenda anymore. Okay, so we'll, fo we'll forward those notes when we receive yeah. them. Mm -hmm. um, schedule of future events and event planning. Uh, we did meet um, – a subcommittee did meet with the Park Speeches and Recreation Committee to set the dates and locations for our um, Habitat Restoration Day. And in that meeting, uh, there was uh, Bonnie Bolagoff and Kevin Fryer representing the um, Park Speeches and Recs, Peter Steeler, me, and uh, Ken McIntyre from Mountain Watch, and Russ um, from uh, Parks and Recs. <clears throat> and we all agreed that it was really much better if we split our expenses, and Natalie, of course, was there, <laughs> if we split our expenses and do two Habitat Days this year. So we are doing Costanias Canyon again on um, April 26th, right? Yeah, Saturday, April 26th from 9 to 1. Um, we have a second Habitat Restoration Day scheduled for June 21st, and that will be Quarry Road, in particular the, um, the base of Owl Canyon. So uh, we won't be necessarily purchasing T-shirts out of our funds. I believe that's correct, Natalie. And we'll have a, a lower-cost lunch um, on both days. But, Natalie, you were going to seek possible T-shirts from... Uh, um, Russ was going to ask Recology. Mm -hmm. He was going to ask an, another company to see if they would donate for the T-shirts. Um, right. I had a thought along these lines I'd like to share. And um, I think it's really nice to offer T-shirts for those who want them. Um, but... Uh, some people just take them and they end up in their drawer. My thought was maybe if people had to put in a dollar or two for their shirt, not the full cost, still very, very inexpensively, that maybe then the people who really felt invested in having that shirt would be the ones to take it rather than sort of everybody just automatically taking one. Mm -hmm. And um, then we could maybe have fewer shirts and, and have them partially subsidized by the people who really felt that they needed to walk away with the shirt. And I'm wondering if anybody else felt like that was potentially a good idea. Um, it would be if, I think, if we were paying for the shirts, but we're not. Okay. If Recology doesn't come through, we won't be having shirts. Okay. Because we have decided to split the funds okay. and have two Habitat Days, and we felt that was more important than yeah. having a T-shirt. Um and Bonnie felt that some people would miss the T-shirts, but that's why Russ is, was seeking um, Recology to do one T-shirt for both events. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Kevin Fryer was going to ask um, his partner, Cisco, Sisto, if he would be interested in designing, picking an animal and designing the shirt. Last year we had the banana slug, um, mm -hmm. and this year we're, I guess we're thinking about an owl or a frog or something like that. I think we landed on red tail hawk. Red tail hawk, that was it, red tail hawk, mm -hmm. because they've, they've been very active this year and they represent both, we'll, we'll only have one shirt for both events. So you might have to get one and wash it in between. Um, and then, uh, so I'm hoping everybody comes. Very excited about both Habitat Restoration Days. And just the other thing to bear in mind is that next year for, Habit for the Earth Day Habitat Restoration Day, we have pre-planned to focus on, hopefully, as needed, focus on um, Firth Park, Firth Canyon, mm -hmm. which has gone un. We did discuss it. Uh, it is not as high of need. It has not um, grown back as much as, you know, Costanias has. So the agreement was to continue with Costanias until we get all the way up to the top. I think Barbara wanted to mention something about a science fair that we missed. Yeah, um, we missed the Littman Science Fair, and... Um, I just wanted to bring that to the committee's attention because I don't want to keep missing events. Um, yeah. I felt that that was kind of sad. Yeah, and I do too. Uh, we were very consumed with the draft EIR, and uh, that's unfortunate because yeah. now I'm really excited that we're getting back to you know regular business because we can't just let it go, all the mm -hmm. things that we do. Um, schedule of events, uh, litter presentation to school. Um, I talked to um, the new principal at BES. I had a conference with her, and um, she feels uh, perfectly willing to accommodate us. I haven't talked to Littman or Panorama. I sort of wanted, to, it was sort of in my mind to work our way through linear in a linear manner <laughs> so that we could practice before we tackled the, the teenagers. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, she basically said, I, had, I need to talk to you, Glenn. Um, she had suggested Wednesday mornings because that's an assembly time for them anyway. And I don't know if that works for you or not. I can kick off. Work. You're asking me if I'm available on Wednesday morning? Yeah. I'm not. You're I'm not. not. Oh, boo. Yeah. Okay. So, so just a couple responses to what you said. I think the strategies to present to elementary school kids versus junior, you know, middle school kids are going to be pretty different. So, so I'm not sure mm -hmm. that, you know, we should look at one as, as a rehearsal for, okay. for the other. Um, I'm sorry I'm not available on Wednesday. Uh, mm -hmm. This is proving to be a pretty bad semester for me. So Friday is, the, is probably the best day. Sure. But I suggest that we do something, and, and perhaps our, our member of the public would, would offer some ideas here. I think we should do something that's heavy on the visuals, and it should be something, that, you know, maybe even with music. Mm -hmm. um, it should be something that just any one of us could, could do. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree on the vigil. She said to keep it under 30 minutes was her preference. Oh, yeah. um, and I thought that was probably fine. And um, I personally don't, didn't, uh, I wanted to talk to the committee before I gave her specifics, so... Mm -hmm. We didn't get very far, but we had a preliminary meeting where we sort of like set the outer bounds of what it could and could not be and and um, made the contact, really, I think was the important thing. Could you give the presentation if I helped you with it? Sure. That's fine. Okay. I mean, that may work best because, you know, they have a schedule too, obviously. Mm -hmm. But my schedule is not going to let me do it on Wednesday. This, okay. This semester. Well, um, doing it on another day is an option too. That was just her first suggestion because they have an established Wednesday Wednesday morning assembly. So that is not written in stone. So that's grades one to six, right? One to five. One to five. Mm -hmm. that's little kids. Mm -hmm. You have more experience with small children than I do. <laughs> yeah. So I was doing some research on, you know, or even, you know, recalling what we did, you know, back in at BES, and um, some things I was thinking of is, you know, starting a group within the school, like a ecology committee, <clears throat> and having those kids kind of be like 
student government in a way and like kind of give them a responsibility of hey you know not kind of like you know like you have hall monitors in a way but kind of mm -hmm. like ecology um you know like trash police or you know something like that where it gives them a responsibility to make sure that other kids aren't doing that um i wouldn't say so much they get to penalize people because then you get you know yeah pure resentment yeah at that age but um you know mm -hmm. something like that i i was thinking of now, are you talking about middle school, I take it, more um, older kids? I think I think kids are capable, you know, fourth, fifth graders to represent and be the leaders of, um, of the elementary school. I think mm -hmm. the younger you give them the responsibility, the yeah, more serious they'll point. take and, you know, mm -hmm. carry on into Lippman, you know. Because um, going to school at BES, you know, I carried on all the life skills we were taught. You know, it wasn't like we oh. waited till middle school to learn something as – the younger we can teach them, you know, hopefully it'll carry on and they'll take even more passion and create their own, you know, um, group up, up at Littman. Mm -hmm. I remember I, in seventh grade, I was the ecology um, officer at Littman. Oh, yeah? It was basically just, you know, more bins for recycling, um, which brings to the next thing is decorative recycling and trash bins. Um, I've seen it at other schools before, kind of like making a mini basketball hoop on top. Um, and that's where the whole trash police comes in into play of, you know, yeah, kids are going to want to shoot their trash in there, but are they going to want to pick it up after if they miss, mm -hmm. you know, but we kind of want to make it a fun way of recycling and throwing away trash um, mm -hmm. to keep them kind of entertained, but also to make them realize the bottom line of, you know, littering is not good for the environment. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so something along those lines. Um, Ask kids to design do not litter signs, um, mm -hmm. kind of like a contest. You know, I remember the wall on the side of Midtown kids, you know, turned in um, the paintings and drawings and things like that. And I remember my friend, she's actually one of the, the kids up there. So to this day, she takes pride in that. And so kind of having a, a contest for elementary and middle school children to design these um, flyers and put around Brisbane at the libraries and community centers and, and things like that so they can show their art but then also the bottom line of teaching them you mm -hmm. know littering and mm -hmm. and trash pickup is this something that you would be available to work with barbara on yeah um working on schedule wednesday mornings i could i could definitely do that um great mm -hmm. what tell, tell me your name again dominique bocanegra dominique and you're going to have to spell your last name for me. B-O-C-A-N-E-G-R-A. -A. Almost. And I definitely her. recognize you, <laughs> you, but name's a, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since I've stayed here longer than a month. Yeah. Three or four or five years, so. Yeah. We've actually talked about this quite a bit, and we would really like to do more with schools. Um, I would like to have a big, you know, have the schools involved in a community festival. Mm -hmm. My my pet project is an ecology pageant involving the the kids from Brisbane Elementary School with costumes and yeah mm -hmm. you, you know you always see people in college at least we had um, like an Earth Day and we had kids and students make costumes out of recyclables. I had one friend make a whole dress with um, plastic bottles. You just taped them and you know kind of just made a, a dress out of it. I mean, there's so many creative ways. I think kids just need that extra push and a sample or, you know, kind of show to them that this is the cool thing to do, you know, picking mm -hmm. up trash, recycling is cool, you know. That's what I've always taught, you know, the, the things that are really important in life, those are the cool things in life as opposed to, you know, everything else we have. We also need a cool person <laughs> to make that case, and, and I think we have in front of us a much cooler person than any of us. Oh, Barbara's Seriously. pretty cool, but, you know. <laughs> no, but, but cool in a way that, that, you know, middle school kids could relate to. I think that's important. And, and so, you know, one, one year we had a T-shirt contest. Um, we had kids design T-shirts, energy-saving T-shirts, and we hung them on a clothesline at the community mm -hmm. festival. But that's as much as we did. And um, we need somebody to, to be more consistent about keeping in touch with the schools and, and somebody with ideas like you have. So mm -hmm. okay. we would love that. Yeah, I'd yeah. definitely love to help. This is the community that made me, so help me to Great. bring me who I am right now. So it's, it's good to get back. I definitely, especially, you know, it's a beautiful town. I definitely want to get involved at the schools that I went to and worked at the teen center. And so there's a lot of 
the history I have here that I'd love to, you know, give back to the other kids and the community itself. What did you get your degree in? Criminal justice and business administration. Uh huh. So, a little bit of both. <laughs> so, so, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just one more question. Um, I guess you know. So, so the idea at the elementary school is we're going to put together some kind of a presentation, right? Yeah. So I think that one thing that really grabs kids is, is probably the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Um, it's got good visuals attached to it. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that? What would be good for a presentation for um, little yeah. kids? Kids, you know, crossword puzzles, mazes, searches, um, litter quiz, you know, kind of something at the end to give them incentive to, to really pay attention. Um, so I guess this would be an assembly, though. So, so we would need to show them slides yeah, okay, or so assembly. tell them a story so well we could follow it up with you know handouts and things yeah absolutely yeah. but I'm talking more about the content of the mm -hmm. yeah. um, <clears throat> what do you think right now um, a lot of just pictures a lot of mini clips I know the the internet has yeah you know so many resources that you type probably type in you know ecology for kids and YouTube will probably bring something up a you know two or three minute segment of a character version of you know the, the explanation we're, we're trying to do here you know kind of break it down to, to kids level and make it you know like again fun and cool and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of resources out there that can help mm -hmm. one thing that might be interesting is a story contest um, sort of where did it go you know, starting with a piece of garbage or some something that you used, mm -hmm. and what tell a story of where it ends up. Mm -hmm. You know, write a little story. I mean, it might be interesting. Somebody actually wrote a whole <clears throat> book on that recently. It was, it was a book about a rubber duck, mm -hmm. but it's an adult book. Mm -hmm. I could look online though, or, or any of us could, and see if we can find anything. You know, if there's any digest of that book to that, you know, would be. Yeah, I mean something fun for kids. Kids, kids to yeah. yeah. I mean, I keep thinking of the steadfast tin soldier. You know, where the tin soldier falls out the window and goes down the and becomes and ends up back in the oven. You know, but um, you know. and then also the whole idea about you know litter bugs. I mean, we used to have a "Don't be a litter bug" kind of campaigns when when I was growing up. And you're right, it stuck with me. I still am like, "Don't be a litter bug," and people have no clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> You know, another uh, <clears throat> possible way of augmenting the the um, uh, assembly, you know, if you're going to have an assembly, you're, you're kind of showing a presentation to all the kids in the school, but then they're going to go back to their classes and they're all going to be in their individual grades. And so if we could, like, find materials that we could pro provide to those teachers, then they could maybe have some activity during their classes, which would be, you know, more like um, age appropriate for the kindergartners, first graders, fifth graders, whatever. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, maybe some activities that they could do to, to help further the, you know, the topic in the assembly. So if it's the garbage patch, they might, you know, integrate it into their geography or to, into their biology or whatever it is, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess they don't really have biology at Frisbee Elementary School, but... They might have something about nature and whatever, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe you two could exchange information and work on that. That would be sure. awesome. That would be I great. Those are all really good ideas. And Glenn, you as well, the three of you. Yeah. And I have some stuff. I mean, I did a, I did a presentation for the Brisbane City Council, so I have pictures. I'll try to find, I'll try to track down that story of that rubber duck. Yeah. That was an adult book, as far as I know, but it might be a good story. So yeah. read it, reading it and digesting it and providing some pictures might be a good way to talk to little kids. Yeah, Definitely absolutely. A lot of visuals. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a children's book on, you know, like it's a, it's a photo journal of how much stuff a person use in a year, uses in a year. You know, like they set out 60 milk cartons and, mm -hmm. you know, 50 gazillion diapers and you know um, there's there's a whole series on YouTube yeah. about that mm -hmm. National Geographic channel yeah it was in a, I believe it was a National Geographic book yeah so that you know so, so did we get your contact information yet or yeah, I, well, do you have email do you have her email address uh, 
she can give it to us and give it or give it to, to Natalie, Natalie so you don't announce it over. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm give it to Natalie. <laughs> I don't know if I made you spell your name. No, okay. <laughs> yeah. Dominique, I'm very excited about that. I think that that's just exactly Great. the kind of energy we need to get going yeah. with that. Um, and um, I definitely, you know, just looking at the Brisbane Star the other night, I, I just feel like there's my age group, you know, kids in college, even kids in high school, that they, they could be put, you know, more more to use, more useful. You know, I know as, as I was growing up playing soccer here with, um, you know, a group of girls that we kind of like were – the start of you know soccer here in Brisbane and um, you know so I know there's a lot of us that still want to give back and when we look at how, how the city is now and the kids now and you know they can do a lot more and we want to do that and so I know my peers would love to help out as well you know right. as kind of like ambassadors or you know just kind of showing like we grew up in this town in this city and you know this is the cool thing to do is to give back and to care about it because you go out to other cities and you know, you don't see and feel the, the family and the community here. Yeah, so. yeah, and it is really important. Yeah, exactly. um, and we have a bicycle <laughs> that you're welcome to use with a litter thing on the back of it at yeah, any time. Yeah, I, I always run around the lagoon and, you know, I always wish I could just had a bag with me real quick because the lagoon can get cleaned once a month. <laughs> Mm -hmm. still be, Seriously. There'd still be trash. You do have yeah. this bicycle that's custom made to collect trash. And we've been trying to recruit somebody to oh, ride I'm, around I'm, on my it. My mornings are, are free right now. So. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you are the person we've been waiting for. Do you want to be on the Open Space and Ecology Committee? Would Spirit, do you think that the um, that the Brisbane City Council would, would entertain the idea of having more members? I mean, we did have... Seven. Yeah, seven. We're up to one. seven, and we're down to four, almost five. Um, let me check with the city clerk about, you know, just whether it's a rolling application period or not. Yeah. I think if it can roll, it should in this case. Okay. I don't want to overcommit because I still want to attend the uh, park speeches and rec um, commission. Right. And, of course, don't forget. They're on different yeah. days. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But if they try to recruit you, we tried first. Just remember that. Exactly. And here's, here's a card. It's got my email address on it, so... Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Very We exciting. are so delighted. And then future events. This, you know, working with this would definitely tie in with future events. So um, one thing that we should go back and pick up that I had put at the beginning of the agenda were the two new items, which was the thank you letter, uh, letters, and the um, interior courtyard issue. So do you want to pick those up? Before we go into the polystyrene ban, review of staff reports, letters, et cetera, et cetera, or not? Sure. Okay. It's fine with me. All right, because I think they'll both be quick items. So the thank you letter, I'll let you. So in your packet, you have a copy of the draft <coughs> letter to Mary Goodkantz, thanking her for her service. And I was really surprised at how much time I spent writing this. It was, it was, Mary has done so much, it was not an easy letter to write. So, um, any edits, comments, and stuff that you guys have are, are most welcome. So take a look at it and, and let me know what you think. Natalie, did you send that out? Do you know? I was trying. <laughs> Right. I think it's a beautiful letter. It makes me want to cry. It's gorgeous. Is it long enough? Yes. Okay. Because, what was that? If I had more time, I'd write a shorter letter. It really say, it says it all in a very eloquent way, Glenn. It is an excellent letter. If you made it longer, I would just embarrass her more. Yeah, I know Mary, Mary fairly well, and so that was part of what I was thinking about. It should be shorter rather than longer. I think it's excellent. Okay, so what action do we want to take on this? Go ahead and... Well, I think we should approve it as written if we want, or suggest changes if we want. Is there a motion to approve it as written? 
I'm not going to approve. Well, I'm going to I'm going to move, but I, I want to give Barbara a chance to re read it and, and comment. I don't want to move so okay. too quickly. No, I think it's beautiful. All right, I move to adopt it as drafted. Okay. Second. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So the next thing we need to do is have it on letterhead, and uh, I guess. I guess we can all just sign it without our names being typed underneath. How do we want to do that? Anybody have nice penmanship? Would it be nice to handwrite it? The letter? Mm -hmm. I have a nice fancy font. <laughs> I have eco font. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very attractive, but I have it. <laughs> I think just letterhead is fine. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then the... Uh, Interior courtyard. Sorry, one other yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. I think you have other. Didn't you want? Were you going to write thank you letters for Elena and? Oh yes, Sean and as Sean. Well? That's right. Yes. And we all need to sign the letter to Mary. Right. Um, I guess we can leave that until the next meeting. But well, we'll, what we can do is we can get it um, done and then let everybody know that it's available to be signed, okay. and you can come in at your own pace. Okay. And if we don't have everybody by the next meeting, we can just bring it to the next meeting. And I, I think our work day at Mary's is still pending when they get their, um, when the engineers finish with their, with their yard, and I don't know when that's going to be. So sure. Are you, are you talking the trench? Yes, the moat. Are, are they? Is there progress on that front? I used to live on the other side of the moat, so. You know, I don't know. Um, I, I think there's been some motion, but we're we're basically talking geologic time here, so it could be okay. A while. Okay. Fair enough. Hopefully we're all still committee members when uh, when the moat gets filled. Yeah, hopefully it'll be before everybody scatters for the summer. At least I'm going to scatter for the summer. Anyway, we have other letters to write, so we should okay. we should talk about and that. And did you were you interested in crafting the other letters since you did such a beautiful job? Uh, I writing? knew you guys were going to ask that <laughs> because no. you write so well, Glenn. What did you expect? <laughs> no. no, I'm not. I've I've got a full plate. I need. I uh, I would like to table a motion that Michelle should write Sean's letter since Michelle was closest I think to Sean okay. personally all right I will mm -hmm. and I'll, I can write Elena's as well okay all right both of those you know we'll all look at it so yes it's a draft. Mm -hmm. yeah it's fine. okay is there any way that we can receive those by email is that a legit thing to do and sure as long as you don't send back comments to each other okay so so um if you, okay. if you send back comments to us. Okay. I will send the letters through Natalie and have her send them out to yes. the group and vice versa. Just Perfect. for all nice mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then on the issue of the um, current ordinances, currently um, the Brisbane Acres areas uh, are different than the ordinances for the rest of Brisbane. And we've had an ordinance for a long time that um, says the lot coverage, and I believe an acreage lot is not more than 25% of the lot. Mm -hmm. um, and there have been some exceptions for lots that are not the standard <coughs> uh, acres size lot. But what came up recently uh, on the 8 Thomas Hill is that that house has a 650 square foot interior courtyard that does not count as part of the lot's footprint for percentage of lot coverage. And yeah, I think you mean although, the building footprint. Yeah, the building footprint. Um, and although we can have no impact whatsoever on that particular project at this time, I think that that loophole needs to be closed for properties that are in the acres because it is in direct contrast and conflict of why that ordinance is in place and the, is there in the first place about lot coverage. Because an interior courtyard, while it is may not be covered space, it goes back to our discussion about open space versus open area that we've had numerous times on our sustainability conversations, our conversations in the draft EIR, our conversations for Sierra Point. Um, the reason that we have a lot coverage uh, restriction for the Brisbane Acres 
is to continue to promote the ecology of the area, the circulation of plants and animals and butterflies, and, and to maintain the kind of you know, mountain landscape that Brisbane's noted for. And being able to allow an interior courtyard to count as part of the, um, <coughs> to not count as part of the FAR, uh, you know, floor area ratio, and not count as part of the footprint, I think subverts the whole reason that we have that ordinance. So I would like us to review that part of the ordinance and then um, send a, um, and then decide whether we want to send it, uh, something to the city council in support of them changing the ordinance. I will tell you that most building ordinances in other parts of, of the county <coughs> do not require that an interior courtyard uh, count as part of the FAR or the footprint. But this is what I consider to be a special case because of San Bruno Mountain, because of the Habitat Conservation Plan, and because of the rare resources that we are trying to protect. And so, as it stands now, you could um, extend the footprint of a building all the way out to the limits of the setbacks on a piece of property and have an interior courtyard that's larger than most houses. And that would still be considered acceptable under the current law or ordinances. And we need to close that loophole right away because there are a lot of lots that are vulnerable, um, still vulnerable uh, for development in the Brisbane Acres. So I would like us to, um, if you could supply for the discussion for the next, put this on the agenda for our next meeting and supply the um, committee with the current ordinance um, and also all of the, the ordinance with all of the exceptions that apply to the Brisbane Acres parcels. And I think maybe what you might want to do is um, ask direct staff to send an email to your liaison committee that this would be something that you're going to be putting on your work plan. Yes. Because I know they've came mm -hmm. a while ago and talked about what you have on your work plan. Mm -hmm. And I think it just might make some sense that you connect back with them, let them know this is something you're going to add to the work plan and you're going to be working on at future meetings. So that way, if you bring it to the city council, your liaison committee is not shocked, surprised yeah. that this was not something that was talked about earlier. So I think that so, might be a way to. Yeah, could you do that as well? Send a memo to them that yes, of course. we are looking at this and we will be reviewing the, uh, that and making hopefully making a recommendation at our next meeting. Um, along with this issue, I would like to look at parking spaces because a paved parking space is still open area, and even though it is not habitat. Yeah. So um, I feel like that's an in equally important issue. I agree with that. Um, the current property under uh, scrutiny has an more parking places than are required and they will be paved and also not of any value to <clears throat> what the intent of the ordinance overseeing the Brisbane Acres um, was. So, is there so, any other? Yeah, okay, so what it sounds like is you want to take a look at the current ordinance as it relates to open area versus open space. Yes. For all aspects of that. Yes, yeah. both yeah. and specifically for the Acres, properties as specifically well. for the acres okay yeah I'm, okay. I'm curious uh, about Michelle your statement about how many the um, how many properties are open to subject to potential development is it possible to get any information about you know should we look at the ordinance what kind of scope or or you know what are the, what are the impacts of it like uh, I'm a little hesitant to have another like green building ordinance situation where we pass an ordinance and then it never goes in, or it never actually applies to anything um, sure I can ask the planning department um, how many acres are buildable yeah that'd be great yeah that would be good I think there's quite a few yeah yeah no I, I'd really be curious yeah. to know. that would be good okay okay so thank we'll you. take Any care other of that comments or questions on that <clears throat> thank you um, next is the polystyrene ban and 
I see that we have a, um, both a list of the food businesses in Brisbane and a letter on the April 1st, from April 1st, 2013. And what's the status of this right now? You know, I think this got put on the, um, to the side as we were going through other things because I think there was a, and I can't remember who was on the subcommittee, that was going to make contact with the different businesses to talk about it because you right. had talked about um, having alternate, you know, showing businesses different alternatives that were available. And I just think that, you know, between the summer, between the working on the draft EIR, EIR right. that we never really met. Um, we never had that subcommittee meet. So at last meeting, the last meeting, we talked about this, and the agreement was that Kima and I were going to put together a questionnaire, a, a sort of survey. And I haven't started on it, have you? No. Okay. So, so we need to write a questionnaire. I'm kind of curious, though, does this, do, do you know if the council is expecting us to survey every single business? I think based on what was going on with the plastic bag ban ordinance, I would recommend to the committee that they survey those businesses that have that would probably be using polystyrene containers. I mean, I think that was a big issue with the, with the plastic bag ban issue that we had not reached out to all the businesses before we had made recommendations. So I have a suggestion to move this along faster. Okay. And that would be that... Um, Staff helps us draft a letter that we can send to all of these businesses with um, what we're proposing for the polystyrene ban. And um, if they feel that there would be any impacts to their business, negative impacts to, the, to their business that they would like to discuss with us, could they please let us know and send a, a return letter to us? So kind of make it more like a negative option um, communication, you know, and draft a letter to explain why and the in, in value and importance and, uh, right. Um, how about, uh, and I'm just thinking, so, and I'm just trying, I'm just remembering our, the plastic ban, bag ban mm -hmm. issue that maybe what we do is we do that and then maybe we set a date for a general meeting. Mm -hmm. So that way if people have concerns, Mm -hmm. And maybe not at in the evening because you know it becomes a challenge as to when's a good time because mm -hmm. I think part of it you might want to do during a daytime but after a lunch because mm -hmm. I think okay. part of these people are have a lunch trade but they also might have a dinner trade yeah um, so maybe if we set like a meeting for like a four o'clock or a three thirty four o'clock time frame at some point in the future and say you know we're going to be um, you know we're going to have a subcommittee meeting on this and if there's any concerns. You know, please, you know, please feel free to attend if you're not able to attend and you'd like to talk to a committee member or a staff person in person, please let us know when, you, when you'd be available. So that way we have, I'm just remembering. Yes, I agree. The conversation. Yeah, very astute. Uh -huh. yeah. I think the initial idea we had was that we were going to visit these businesses and speak with them in person, but I just counted on the two sides of this sheet, there are 57 businesses. Yes. And we, you know, I don't have time. I doubt that anybody else on this committee has time. So I prefer to do it that way. Do you think that will satisfy the council? Uh, are, you con are you also considering the food trucks? Or are yes, that counts the food trucks, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these are based in San Francisco and outside of Brisbane. I, it, would be, it would be pretty onerous to actually get in touch with yeah. them. And the other thing, too, is things have changed already rapidly in the last mm -hmm. year, year and a half since this first, first came up. And I would say that probably half or more of these are already compliant. Yeah. And so I don't think it's quite as uh, onerous or quite as, whoa, you're doing what? Right. As it was when this first came up. Mm -hmm. So time has been on our side in that regard, and it's been against us in that that much more styrofoam's out right. there. Right. I, I just think, yeah, I th do I think it's going to... You know, I think it will satisfy, I think we can feel good about ourselves that we have done what we can. If a business comes in and complains that they weren't personally met with, we would say, here's everything we try to do. 
but as you know when you go to council meetings mm -hmm. a, a single individual who is um, who feels that they have not had that personal touch from us as a city um, gets a lot of weight mm -hmm. so but I think we feel like you know we, we, we can do what everything we possibly can to create that personal touch without going out and putting ourselves in front of 57 people 48 of whom would not want to see us yeah right. and and several of whom don't aren't in Bruce Wayne right so okay. I think it's so I think it's a good step and I think it's a good explanation as to why we did what we did and I think it would make a it makes logical sense yeah Natalie do you want to work with Stuart on drafting that letter and then run it by the subcommittee which is Glenn and Kima that would be great and yeah, sooner is better than Wonderful. later so that we can and and uh, decide on a, a date that we can have this and so that it can be incorporated one communication easier right and, and then it, um, we can supply the same materials some of the same materials that you supplied to us in the letter so they can see what would be visually what would be acceptable and you know and it also might make sense from what I heard you know I wasn't here at the last meeting I apologize for that and no I did not watch I was busy I know it's a shock um, but um, maybe the other thing we can do is also ask a couple of questions in the letter where they kind of have to respond anyway to us so we know okay. well it's almost better than if they don't respond because if they don't respond we'll assume in the letter you need to say if you don't respond we'll assume that you don't have any problem with this right but we can also ask you know are they already you know are they already in compliance or something yeah so you yeah. we can get yeah that's but, some information but you need them. to have the negative option right. sentence in there yes. that says if you don't respond we will assume that you are right. fine with this and we will notify you when this ban goes into effect yeah I, right. I assume that you'll mention that this is a county thing and that a lot of San Mateo County communities have already you know adopted it and blah 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 I, I would imagine uh, because looking at the list of food trucks a lot of them come to my uh, office in Redwood City and most you know most if not all of them have compostable containers because a lot of the cities that they do business in will have those ordinances as well so this might be nothing new for them for for the food trucks at least. Yeah, yeah so in some ways it seems like it's probably more likely that the food trucks would do that yeah. than that the um... yeah I don't actually remember getting polystyrene at work at all ever hmm. yeah and many of the other ones already do it, it as well. So, I'm not I'm not seeing a lot of opposition here. So, let's just let's get it done. Yeah. Okay. Next item is review of staff report and letters. Um, one of the things that came is an invitation to the 2014 Sustainability Awards. It's. Um, They'll be giving the Green Building Award for San Mateo County. Um, I believe it's a fundraiser. There's a, from 5.30 to 6.30 a, a wine and beer reception, exhibits in a silent auction, 6.30 dinner, live auction raffle. Uh, this is on Thursday, April 3rd, 2014 at the College of San Mateo Bayview Dining Room. Um, and if anyone would like to go... There are reservations for tickets are available. You can also buy raffle tickets. And I'm going to leave these here. And, and after the meeting, if anybody's interested to go, let me know. Let me pass it around. Um, Is there a cost for that? I, I, you know, it's one of those things where you can't really tell if there's a cost. Oh, okay. I mean, they would love you to. Well, here, let me. Just, it, it sounds like a fundraiser. It is a fun <laughs> Yeah, so. So if you go, you're going to be expected. Oh, you're going to you're going to be expected to write the check while you're there. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. I can't really understand the whole cost part of it, but. Okay. Uh. I was just curious. I think it's. Well, like a neighborhood sponsor for a thousand dollars includes four tickets. Oh, it's. $90. I think it's $90, $90 for members $100. and $100 for non-members. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there is anybody who would like to go, let us know. Okay. Does that mean you're going to treat us, Stuart? Yeah. 
Um, we'd have to look at what we have for travel and training for the committee members. And you know, Michelle, it may be something you know, that we could take out of a travel and training budget. Okay. Um, next item is, is there any other staff reports or letters? Um, I think you were going to review the storage of liquid fuel fire uh, coaches. Oh, right, that, that comes under I that. had drafted. Sorry. Were you? Right. Um, and that's this one, the next one, right? Right. And then I, wow, I drafted something for fossil fuels divestment as well. Okay. Didn't even remember that. There's two here. Um, so they, they, the um, city council has not gotten back to their fire code changes yet. So we are still timely on this. Mm -hmm. um, I asked John that when they do bring it back to let me know so we can attach the fire code changes, um, you know, staff report from the Open Space and Ecology Committee to it. Mm -hmm. Um, so if there's, I know I think I ran it by Michelle when I first drafted it thinking it had to be done quickly, but now we don't need to do it as quickly. So if there's any um, comments or changes that any of the committee members would like to see me make to it, let me know. Okay. I, this is harder because on the, on the computer it was highlighted. <laughs> Sorry. Um, in, before. Before we discuss that, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the article that, that Ellen has sent, and then you can copy the article and send it to everybody. And basically what the article is about is um, in Fallon, Nevada, a Kinder Morgan pipeline uh, ran through the area, and there was a leak in the pipeline under the elementary school. And um, there was... Um, that's the facts, and the other facts are uh, several children got leukemia, and one child, at least one child, got brain cancer, et cetera, et cetera. Whether those two things are related or not has not been, I believe, established. I didn't read the whole article, but it's it's pretty clear that there was there was a huge uh, cancer cluster after that. So I do want the council, city council and the committee all to and to have a copy of this article as that for as part of the testimony of why we want even as strict as possible control over the storage and transmission of um, liquid fuels. So just to be clear, we're not talking about the Kinder Morgan facility on the Baylands, are we? Yes. Was that Crocker Industrial Park? Well, we added Crocker Industrial Park as an area that we don't want to have any additional. Uh, right, I understand that, but but um, does that apply to the, the Kinder Morgan site on the Bay? I mean, Kinder Morgan is a pre-existing condition. I think that this co the code changes are for, fut are for future locations. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I was trying to get clear. So, okay. So it doesn't apply to the Kinder Morgan site where they're already there. They could add an, an, another tank if they wanted to. I don't. I don't know about they, that. I don't know that they could. Yeah. yeah. From a business license perspective, I'd be happy, but I, I don't know from a what. Just saying, we passed a tax on capacity, so if, my finance director hat comes up periodically. Um, right. I don't know what it talks about. Whether or not it talks about additional. I mean, I haven't read it recently. I don't know if it talks about additional sites or additional uses of the same site. I don't know. So that might be something that you know we would need to look at. Question. And when is that? Is the um, tank tax potentially coming into? Um, I think the city council still serves the city council's subcommittee that is reviewing a recommendation to the city council. Um, the anticipation is it would be sometime during this fiscal year, so sometime before June would be the anticipation. So ha has everybody had a chance to read what was added to this from us? Uh... Yeah, I think I read that on the computer. Yep. Is there anything that is, that we did not take into account or that you'd like to add, or is this ready to be sent to the um, city council? 
I know why I didn't remember writing it, because Natalie wrote it. I know. But it has my name on it, so I thought I did. I'm going, well, I don't remember that. Yep, I'm fine with it. Okay, so. So we'll, at, we'll attach the other article to it as well. Um, if, if and when it goes back to the city council, we will let the committee know so that way so a representative or representatives of the committee could be there to talk to talk to the issues from the committee. Okay. Okay. And then the fossil fuels divestment letter. So thank you for, for drafting the letter. So this hasn't been sent to the city yet, right? This was just for us to right. look at? Right. What we would do is then put it on a future council meeting, either, I mean, obviously we're not going to hit the May, March 17th meeting, mm -hmm. but we can try for the either the April 3rd, no, it's not April 3rd, is it? 17, 21, 31, 7, April 7th or April 21st meeting, depending on what their calendar looks like. One thing I have to say about that is that I'm unable to attend council meetings because I teach a class on Monday nights that goes to almost 10 o'clock. Oh, don't worry. So we can put it towards the end of the agenda. Okay. Yeah, we didn't get out till midnight last Monday. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If, if you can do that, I'm happy to come and, and talk. I, I, I don't think we've had a meeting end before 10. Okay. No, I take that back. We've had a couple end before 1030. But in the last couple of years, I don't think we end before 10 on a regular basis. Okay. I wouldn't be able to get here until 10. Okay. Okay. And did you get a chance to review this? Are you good with this? Pretty much. I, you know, I, let me ask the committee. I think, you know, there's a lot more Next that we one. can say about climate change um, as a sort of backup for this letter. I would be willing to draft some additional language, but I would like to see um, how the committee feels about what's, what's written. Comments? I think that the the first section on purpose could be maybe expanded a little more about I mean to I guess to Glenn's point about climate change and and what about the city in terms of what we're trying to project as a as a sustainable city or in line with previously you know kind of direction by the city council that this would align it just saying that it would behoove doesn't necessarily, I mean, it's a nice word, but, um, you know, if, if, if the city council has proclaimed that climate change is a problem, then we could say this is in line with the proclamation of the city council. Or if the city council has said we want to be a sustainable city, then we would, you know, in other words, find some proclamation or statement by the city council that this would support, and that's why, so we use that as sort of the logic of why it, it would behoove. I'm sure if we went to the general plan, we'd find something that would yeah. be applicable. I mean, have we made any, you know, like, do we have a, we have a sustainability committee, right? So, right. so uh, potentially in whatever, when they, when the city council says, this is why we're having a city, uh, a sustainability committee, we could probably find some statements to support why we should do this or, or something. Yeah. Okay. One other question I have: Do you do you want me to suggest some text, or do you want to um... anything you could do to make it a better report would be fine. Okay. So if you want to suggest some additional text. Okay. So you emailed this to me, so I'll go find that and put some things in track changes and. Or if you um, want, we could email to you again. So be that great. so that way it gets to the top of your list and it's easier to find. That would be great. Because I know that always helps me when. It does. It helps me too. Yes. So, so let me just ask you, this is just your opinion, Stuart. Do you think that we need to include language in this letter about, I mean, basically what we're doing here, as far as I know, Brisbane does not have any funds under its own control that it invests. Am I right? We invest in uh, U.S. Treasuries. Okay. And so. Yeah. I mean, we do invest, but we don't invest here. I mean, right. we invest in, you know, obviously PERS has money. Mm -hmm. um, we have money at the state's local agency investment fund, but that's a money market. So 
I don't know if they have any money in corporate paper that would be considered. I don't think they do. I don't know, but I know they have corporate paper. I mean, LAFE does, does have corporate paper. Okay, so that's why you put in the phrase about Brisbane, inve Brisbane right. investing, because I thought all our money was held by CalPERS, but. No, I mean, that's just for the retirement side, but I mean, we have, okay. you know, millions of dollars of our own that we try to, you know, keep safe and at the same time get some kind of interest rate. And there's a state fund which acts as a money market fund where we can withdraw money, you know, with less than, with 24 hours notice. So if we need cash and we have about $5 million in LAFE, we also have about, I think it's 6 to $10 million in um, U.S. Treasury, U.S. Treasury, U.S. agencies. So like the Federal Home Loan Bank, the, things like that. Mm -hmm. So we don't directly invest, but we may have money in LAFE that put, that LAFE may put money in, PERS may put money in, mm -hmm. things like that. So, so basically the, the idea I had about this and you, nothing you've just said changes that, is that what we're asking the council to do is send a letter to CalPERS, basically, and say, you know, as an advisory from the Brisbane City Council, we, we support CalPERS divesting from fossil fuels because most of this is not under Brisbane's direct control, right? It's all about funds. So this is not, in some ways, this is not a great moment, but there is a big campaign, statewide campaign, directed at CalPERS and at the California State Teachers Retirement Fund to get them to divest. And if they did, it would be huge. So, so one question I have is, do you think it would be useful to include language about um, the economic costs and or benefits of divestment? I mean, do we need to go there or, or should it just talk about climate change as a problem. Because there's plenty of documentation. I mean, Goldman Sachs just wrote a big report. Deutsche Bank just issued a big report. They're saying that um, holding on to carbon-based fuels may actually be a risk. So so should I track down sure. bullet notes on that stuff? I mean, if you can. If you can give, like, <laughs> well, okay. I mean, I, it's one of those things. I, I think, yeah. you know, the city council always appreciates more information than less. Because they just don't have enough to read. Speaking of which, can you make sure this EPA document co goes with the recommendation as well? Yes. Okay. Alrighty. So if you, I mean, if you just give us a site, we'll, we'll we, we'll, we can track it down. If it's, you know, if okay. it's a Goldman thing or if it's a, I mean, you don't have to track it down yourself if you just give us an idea of where we might find it. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's plenty of stuff. It's, it's been pretty well covered in the financial press. So yeah, I, I can do it. And it sounds like we don't need a whole lot of detail. No, I mean. They're not going to read 30 pages of it, but if there's like, a, okay, you know, an article that we can pick up and then you know pull a paragraph or two out and add to our report, that would be good. Okay, all right. So, so I'll try to get that back to you within a week, and if you could send it to me again, that would be sure. Great. Thank you. And as I said, you know, we can shoot. You know, PERS is not divesting anytime in the near future. So if we if we make it on the April 7th or the April 21st meeting, it's not going to. So can you ask for it to be at 10 o'clock or later so that I can, and can you let me know? Yes. I mean, what I can do is work with the city manager, see which meeting has a lot of stuff on it, okay. and then put it under new business. And you, and you might not get to it. Well, we might not get to it. I mean, that would be the downside, <laughs> okay. but I mean, we can put it towards the end. Okay, because even if I'm going to get here by 10, I'll have to let the class out a little bit early. So uh, I, I, well, I, I wouldn't rush. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, we're going to have a meeting Monday night, and my guess is it will go till 11 or less. But it's not going to be on that. No, it will not. But I mean, we don't, we don't tend to end early. Council meetings on a regular basis um, are scheduled to go from 7.30 to 10.30. We very rarely end early, and oftentimes they end up extending the meeting. Okay. All right. Okay. Next article, uh, next item on the agenda is the Invasive Species Ordinance. Another hot topic. Um, so, what we this is uh, where did this is from the city of Chicago or is this where you got that from? Uh -huh. 
Is that the only invasive species or ordinance you were able to find from other? In searching for about 10 minutes or so, it's what I found. Um, oh, okay. I can't imagine there wouldn't be any more. Okay. There. I know that Florida has several, or has invasive species ordinance. I think I think this whole state may have one, and some of the counties and um, theirs would be interesting for us to look at because my understanding is it requires removal of certain species. Yeah. So can we search a little bit further and see what else we can come up with? I can help too, but not right now. Yeah. So well, I no, we'd wait till you got home. Hmm? We'd wait till you got home to help you. I mean, I know you can't help during the meeting. Sorry. Thanks, Stuart. I'm sorry. It's nice of you to be so accommodating. So I've Appreciate been it. in touch with the county because you wanted to know what that would look like, and mm -hmm. um, so they said it's it's kind of complicated. And he said it's it's like the biggest gun in your drawer that you could use as an ordinance. So there's a group that um, so I spoke to. The agriculture commissioner. Good grief. And so he was really interested in having one of us or some of us go to this um, meeting. And also, he would like for us to send him a list of the species that we're interested in adding to an ordinance to see what has already been done, if anything, or if something can be changed for whatever species what that we're looking at. What um, meeting was it that he wanted us to come to? Um, San Mateo County Weed Management Group. Okay, so this was a county, county thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, he sent me an email with all that information, so I could I could send that out. That would be great. And who did you talk to? Um, who else? Just the agricultural commissioner and. Um, I talked to um, the supervisor's assistant. Okay. Cool. Um, and then that's and then she talked to several other people for me, and then I finally was led to um, Fred. So, so nobody said you're crazy, or did they? <laughs> in, in so many words, but I mean, no, they didn't. But I mean, he really encouraged for us to go to this group and then find out what's already being done so far. Okay, and do you have a? Um Meeting schedule for this group? He sent me an email with that, so I'll send that out. Okay. Um, I know we have a technical advisory committee group meeting for the HCP. I believe it's on the 20th of March. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to attend, but we might ask them as well. For right. You know, we, we could also talk to the California Native Plant Society and the Invasive Species Council and, and see, you know, what they think about this. Um, see what they think about the prospects of, of getting ordinances passed at the county level or even at the state level. You know, I've, I was initially thinking we should think about one for Brisbane, but in a lot of ways it doesn't really make sense. Brisbane is just too small. And, you know, part of San Bruno Mountain isn't in Brisbane, so... It really needs to be a, a county sort of thing. So um, he did say he considered doing an ordinance himself for certain species, huh. but he got a lot of pushback from nurseries because um, a lot of these plants are. I highly need the ordinance. Yeah, they're highly profitable. So I mean, you get a lot of pushback from you know people saying that you know you can't tell me not to sell this plant anymore. So he said <coughs> ordinances in general need a lot of support. I, I think that I think we should still continue to pursue it and I think that pursuing it in Brisbane first and countywide simultaneously or area wide I mean we need to set an example and then move forward with asking the our neighbor cities that all are uh, you know around San Bruno Mountain to adopt the same ordinance do you have a take on that, Stuart? No, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, the challenge is, is if you just do something in Brisbane, you're right, is if you plant it on South San Francisco side of the mountain, it will spread. Yeah. So I think, you know, creating something like a model ordinance that we can 
put forward um, would be a good idea. We can, you know, I'll talk to David about, you know, David. about our yeah, city attorney, okay. Okay. about like, you know, what the cost of trying to draft something like that is. You know, I think maybe what we can do is also, again, inform the, your, your liaison committee, this is a project that you guys are working on, that, you know, you, you, know, you, know, you recognize that the challenge is, is, you know, just because we do restoration on the mountain does not um, keep the mountain to the point where it needs to be. We're continuously continuing to plant invasive species around it. Right. And that, you know, they grow. Um, and I think, you know, obviously, you know, I think Cliff and Ray are your liaison members. I think they both understand it very well. But just, you know, as I said, just keeping them informed so that way when you bring it to them to ask their compatriots in other cities to also mm -hmm. look at it um, just so that they're not, again, caught by surprise. Maybe they'd have some advice about how we should, you know, how to proceed. Right. I mean, I, I think, you know, work, working through the county, the agriculture, the agricultural people might is a good idea. I think... You know, talking to David about, you know, having maybe him doing more of a search as well. Okay. Um, to see, you know, what, what you know, what has stood the test of court mm -hmm. oh. out there, um, you know, especially in California. Yeah, because... You know, having an ordinance in Chicago, it might be good, but they probably have a different issue than we do. Well, even within our own county, different areas have different issues. Right. Because some of the things that are... You know, public enemy number one on San Bruno Mountain are not going to be as an issue virulent down in the Redwood Forest along Laguna Honda. No, you're you're right, and I think the other though is that if you have that if there's an ordinance that has stood um, challenge in California in California courts, it would carry greater precedent than something that has stood precedent, you know, in Illinois or in Florida. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I think yeah, you know, we can have David, you know, do a quick search, to okay. see if there's things that has stood the court tests here in California. Okay. So, so I can ask Fred, what's being done for the species we're interested in? Can we list off? Was it because meetings ago we were like top five or top seven? I think we were looking at. Was that right? So. So the top seven that we should be concerned about really should be validated by the Technical Advisory Committee for San Bruno Mountain. Mm. Um, and that's one of the things we should ask them. I mean, I know what are my top seven, but... Do, so do you want, me to, you want us to send an email to Sam and ask him to... <coughs> mm -hmm. um, what the top second, 10 in order. Top 10 in order. But, yeah, it's but actually in the Habitat Management Plan, probably. Oh, okay. But when this man was talking about what's being done, I don't think he meant ordinances. No, I know. No, he has not. Because, so, I mean, he's got, as he, as he said, he's got the political pushback. I don't think we'd have very many nurseries in Brisbane. One. I, I'm saying, I, you know, I don't think we'd have that same kind of pushback here. Do we have any, what do we have for nursery in Brisbane? We have the San Bruno Mountain. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. The Mission Blue Nursery. I, I had discounted that because. Wow. <laughs> don't discount it. I mean, just in terms of, like, invasive species. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, is we don't have very many of those nurseries in town. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm still not sure of the point of us finding out what's being done. We, we know what's being done doesn't include an ordinance, and that's what we're interested in. Right, but I think what the city council would like to know is what what is being done in the county, so that way they can say, you know, they can recognize, that, you know, we appreciate what's being done, however it does not go far enough. Right. And then when they're making their case to their fellow council members, okay. they can explain, you know, we recognize that the, these are the things that are happening. However, okay. here's still the situation on the ground. And we need to move further than what's already been being done. Right. Okay. I think that would be the, you know, how, to how do you extend that logical argument to the next step? Mm -hmm. kind okay. Of thing. Got it. So in other words, I mean, we, we would want to eliminate, especially the interface zone plants like English ivy. Um, and you know stuff like that. But it's so easy to pull up when you guys get do it. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what Peter told me. Take an army of people to keep up with it. Well, though. that is the problem. Yeah, I know. And you know the ord our ordinance may need some kind of for some things like like that, some kind of uh, distance parameters from you know how far from a wildland or that type of thing. Okay, so we have a, we have 
actions to be taken on to further this. Okay, and that can that be put on the agenda again for next meeting to follow up on where we're at. Um, the next one is the inventory of dead trees and tree removal. And Elena um, did go through Crocker Industrial Park and um, sent a list of the dead Monterey pines in the industrial park and also um, some of the other trees that are sick. And there are at least 25, 24 to 25, one less after today, um, dead Monterey pines in the Crocker Park area. And she says well over half the trees are fighting the beetle. That's extensive. And one of the reasons so many of those trees in that cluster are sick is that they were all uh, planted at the same time, mm -hmm. primarily, and they were all of the same, shall I say, nursery stock. So there wouldn't be much genetic uh, variation in that group of Monterey pines. It's probably one of the, and, and their proximity to each other is probably one of the reasons that they're so largely impacted, although I'm noticing more and more trees around town well, are also um, impacted. Well, I don't have first-hand knowledge that this is factual, but my understanding is that the beetle's normal range is well south of here, and they have moved up into Nor Monterey Pine territory as a result of climate change, and the Monterey Pine just is not built to deal with it. They have a natural susceptibility to the beetles, mm -hmm. and so now that climate change has brought the beetles into their into the Monterey Pine range, it's just massive. What I heard from somebody who who actually knows a lot about forests is that what's killing the Monterey Pines is a fungus, and um, that their the, their ninety their mortality rate is ninety nine percent. Yeah, the beetles, um, as I understand it, transmit a virus called the pine pitch canker. Okay, that's it. And it basically makes the trees bleed out sap. Mm -hmm. and, and kills them, so. Yeah. It's a combination of things. So, so they're all basically doomed. Basically. I mean, right. No matter which nursery they're from. Yeah. Right, but some have, like some of the older trees and some of the older Monterey pines in Brisbane seem to be holding up a little bit better. Um, I don't know. I, I'm sure in the next 15 to 20 years we'll lose them all, but mm -hmm. in the meanwhile... What do we want to do? So did Elena talk to a tree service? Can we get a discount? I mean, that was what we were going to try to do. Actually, it was Natalie who was going to talk to the tree service. Um, I spoke to Davy Tree, and they said the way they bill is per time. Mm -hmm. So and yeah, and that. travel. So I mean, they wouldn't have a lot of travel time here. Um, so he said he needs to do a site visit in order to give me a real estimate and so we, we just kind of left it at that okay so now you have a list and you can send them on out there um have we thought anything about replacement trees for any I, I mean part of the question is how many of these are on private property oh i yeah. believe all of them are right so then the question is does the city you know does i think not you, have the right i believe right i mean and it's an interesting question i think you might get into um, you might get into the question of we don't have a right to go on their property without their permission. Mm -hmm. They may ask us. They may, if we ask them for permission, they may be willing to have us pull down, dead, take down dead trees, and replant, bed, you know, replant trees that will exist. But then you get into the question of is, you know, does the city want to get into the so. business of um, taking down, paying for tree removal on private property? And that would be a city council question. So I think yeah. before we go ask Davy Tree for a estimate, you know, this would be something that you might want to once again well, bring I think bring to council and see if they, you know, if this is something that they would want to pursue, and then they can ask tell staff to go work with Davy Tree and do the budget, you know, and get a cost and everything. I think it, I would personally approach it from the opposite end. I would get a price and then present that information to city council. Okay. Um, and, and they could say yes or no. I, I thought we were just going to try to see if we could facilitate a discount oh. yeah. so that yeah. the private property owners could pay for it. I really don't yeah. think the okay. city should Yeah, you're be, right. Okay. I don't think the city should be paying for it. Right. I think for it. the city should be saving their money to 
by open space. So, so if the okay. city could facilitate, you know, some sort of group coordination, right. coordinated tree removal, that might give the property owners an incentive. It would be cheaper to do it that way than to right. do it on their own. I mean, what it probably is, it would be cheaper if they all did it at one time because then there's right. like, you save money on the travel time. Yeah. Right. Whereas yeah. if you came, kept coming back 25 different times. Right. Okay. And so the idea is for us to facilitate coordinating. Right. That's what I get for missing a meeting. The removal of the okay. trees, not to pay for it, okay. mm -hmm. but to facilitate and asking Davy Tree for a discount for this program. So is the next thing to talk to Davy Tree and, and get them out here and see if they could come up with a an estimate for the whole bunch and then or or talk to the property owners. I mean I, I understand what I understand what Barbara is saying is that, you know, if you talk to the property owners they would probably say, you know, how much is it going to cost me? Right. That would be their first question out of their mouth. Yeah, I think we need to put together. So if we can put together like an S, you know, some kind a group of group plan as a group plan, saying you know, if all of you do this, it would cost X. Aren't they required to remove dead standing trees on their property? I think only if they're only if it's a dangerous and hazardous condition, which they all will eventually be. Yeah. But they may not be at this moment in time. Right. <sighs> but I'm, the I'm, I'm carrot, just the carrot. That we should hold out for them is maybe waiving the requirement to replace that tree if they all yeah. do it within this period of time. That could you, be. You said that last time, Michelle, and I'm still cringing. <laughs> Here's my thought on that. I know that it makes you cringe, but historically, the area didn't have trees. True, but it didn't have buildings either. It, and it didn't have buildings either. And I think that they're working on new plans for Crocker Park, and I'm not happy with the current tree palette that the city is proliferating. I'd love to see some of the trees being replaced by, you know, ancient oaks or, you know, not ancient oaks, oaks that will have the potential to become ancient, and other native trees that are more suited to the area that aren't susceptible to this kind of, a pandemic or, or su suited to the next area that we're going to become right as we get a little bit warmer I mean right. I think that might be one of the things that as a city we may want to think about when we're talking about what we want to have planted mm -hmm. is recognizing uh, and you know, I was listening to an NPR show talking about how things are progressing north mm -hmm. and that you know we may not be happy with what's going on but we might want to start thinking and preparing for mm -hmm. a slightly different right so, and that may be something that the Open Space Ecology Committee might want to take on is working with the mm -hmm. Parks and Recreation, you know, maybe doing a joint meeting, a joint subcommittee with Parks and Recreation, and coming up with a new tree palette. Yeah, mm -hmm. we should. We'd probably yeah. need some expert advice, though. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, Not working so working with an arborist and trying to figure out how do you get ahead of this cycle that we're facing, not getting behind it. And so, when I'm talking about not requiring them to immediately plant a new tree, but how about having a deferral program? So if they participate in this tree removal, because it's expensive, we will defer them having to plant a new tree for 24 months. That gives us time to review the tree palette, gives them time to recoup their losses, gives the area time to heal, and see whether any other trees are going to go down next to it. And, and it might be just the incentive they need to go ahead and, and bite the bullet and take the expense of removing the, the dead tree now while we have this group thing. And they may not be financially prepared to, to do the whole hog of remove the tree and plant a new one. I'm just trying to think of ways to make it more palatable them, for the owners so that they I get it done. I appreciate that, yeah. And, and I think the if we remove part of the onerous part of it, and I mean I'm all for planting, for planting, but I want to have some give and take for them so that they have some incentive to participate. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a good point. Um, you know I could maybe see twelve months, twenty-four <coughs> months is you know that's that's 
hard for me to swallow, just personally. Um, I recognize this is a personal issue for me. Mm -hmm. um, but really, planting a tree isn't that expensive. I mean, it is if you do it right. And, uh -huh. and do we know what we want them to plant? Yeah, I mean, I could see the 12 months that maybe we could get our tree list a little more straight, better straightened out. But, yeah. Um, You're an optimist. I know. 12 months to get the, get the, yeah. through council? Through here, um, through Parks and Recreation, and through okay. council? And, the, and I guess just the other part of it is, is that they don't, you know, we don't have a grand plan for um, the industrial park. And in the meanwhile, we have this tap that happened, you know? The charrette. The yeah. charrette, yeah. So I, I just kind of want to go like, okay, what's going to happen with that? Mm -hmm. it's, it's just an idea. But the other part of it is really, I hate to say this, but can you get a bid from somebody else? Sure. I hate to just go with Davy Tree just because that's who we always see. Don't we have a, a tree company in Brisbane? There's a Humboldt. That's a very Humboldt. small yeah. tree company. And there's also Appleseed, but those are both individual proprietorships oh. with very limited... Right. Yeah. And yes. local businesses, I think it's a good uh, argument for supporting local business. We can ask Humboldt. Yeah. And I haven't heard of Appleseed. They're over off of San Bruno Avenue. I yeah. Think. I've seen their truck. He mostly works up in San Francisco, but he does live here and he does have equipment here. Yeah. Just trying to remember if I signed off on a business license. Uh oh. <laughs> he may not do business in Brisbane. Right. Yeah, That's what I I'm don't thinking. I think he does. Um, but we should also look at other tree services besides sure. Davy. Okay. That we can look at two or three. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, the, the tree deferral, I understand your your wish, but I, I don't feel like it's a very big carry, honestly. I don't know. <laughs> for, you, for me giving up my trees, it's, it's, I, want more, I want more shininess. That makes sense. Okay. So what do you want to give them as a carrot? I don't know. Okay. That's a, you know, just because I'm unsatisfied with what's being offered doesn't mean I necessarily have a good idea, I'm afraid. <laughs> so I like it if it did. Well, we could sit on that for a month <laughs> while a we get, while we, yeah. um. Let's sit on that for a month. We could sit on it for a month while we get, um, idea, you know, mm -hmm. different pricing. Okay. And the other thing that you could be thinking about during that month is what would you like to see planted? Maybe we could get a group deal for them on that. Yeah. Love it. I think Stuart's right that, you know, we really do need to, we're looking at a big shift and we ought to prepare for the shift so that whatever gets planted will have a chance to, to live for a while because the shift is big enough that. I mean, because that's what, I mean, from what I'm hearing from Barbara, that's part of, part of what happened to the set of trees that we have is that they weren't, they were, they were good for the climate we had 20 years ago or 30 years ago. They're not good for the climate we have today. So if we want trees to last us another 30 years, we should be thinking about what's the climate going to be in 30 years and be right. planting ahead of that climate. Yeah. But and we should get some expert yes. to work on that. Advice. Yes. Right. Yeah. No, I fully agree. Because so many times people, you know, it's like, don't screw with Mother Nature. People have decided to plant things because to, to help, and it's turned into a, a disaster. Mm -hmm. And I, pompous grass comes right to the front of my mind when I think about something that was planted to help an environmental situation that turned into an amazing disaster environmentally. So we what need was to be, pompous grass going to help? Erosion on the coastline. Okay. Yeah. It's planted by Caltrans. Okay. And, and it, it did, is, probably. And, and it, No, it actually didn't. Oh. It actually helped to erode and break up the dirt Oh. It was, it's, it was a... The roots are, the roots are too... Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, eucalyptus globulus was also planted as a thing to help the environment to, you know, stop wind and prevent California becoming a dust bowl like... Right. I mean, this might be an area where we might want to go reach out to Berkeley. Yeah. Um, as opposed was... to like somebody who's already in the field of arborists, but if we reach out to the universities and see what the universities are looking at for the future... Yeah. I was actually sure. thinking about uh, reaching out to Golden Gate Park um, because they are dealing with the same thing. They have a um, okay. single-aged forest, a lot of Monterey pines, and um, they've been very proactive about confronting, you know, um, 
Sure, we can diversity find, and we species. Can find somebody and they have a Golden fairly Gate similar Reese, client. Golden Gate Park. Yeah. 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 This is where I was wishing that Sean was still with, on the committee. Just, Joe Cannon could probably recommend somebody. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So have we <laughs> beat the dead trees to dead death? Dead trees. <laughs> well, at least They're for this really month. They're really dead now. At least for this month. Do it again next month. Okay, so that'll be on the agenda again for next month, too. Uh, um, and then follow up on property ownership of the Baylands. This was more of an informational type of thing because we had asked for this while we were doing the draft EIR and it was not provided with the draft EIR. And apparently we still don't even know um, who owns every all of it. Correct. I'm, I'm looking. You know, I, I, Natalie did this work. I think. I mean, because um, I have two maps. One that shows, or two. There was a spreadsheet that you didn't print, and the spreadsheet uh, showed. Um, areas that we did know who the property and the owners were, and then the second set of maps apparently is areas where we still don't know who they are. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So with the properties that um, we didn't identify owners, they're mainly roadways. You, as you can see, it's the attachment that's only two pages. Uh -huh. um, except for the one that looks, you can see it's a dock, so that's city property. But all the other roadways, um, I contacted the manager of UPC and of property ownership, and he never got back to me after I <laughs> tried several times to contact him. And he, I gave him the numbers. He said he'd help me, and then I never heard from him again. Mm. Well, that's a problem. Interesting. Stuart, that's kind of a problem because all of the property owners are supposed to be identified w with the EIR. Well, he said if they're private, if they're privately owned, he can't share that information with me. But either way, he didn't get back to me and tell me that. Um, he kind of said that just in original conversation. Uh, let's do a little bit more work on it. Okay. I'm just thinking maybe um, the county can help us as well. Yeah. yeah I'll call, call one of my friends in the county. All right. It looks like part of that is the, uh, is the Caltrans right away. Right. I mean, that's what I'm looking at. It's it could it could be the it could be the state owning it for some of it, but I mean, at least when you're talking about the major parcels, it, you know, it looks like it's a very good breakdown of all the different owners and names of owners. Yeah, because like on the <coughs> on the map <coughs> where it doesn't say for sure. This property is zero zero five one six two nine nine seven. That little tiny blue thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's where there's wetlands there, and that kind of leads to the tunnel. Okay. The railroad tunnel. So it looks like it's a old railroad right, right away. But that would be a piece of property that would be important to be in. Okay. Uh, that's just what it looks like from this. Right. Thing, like. I mean, and, you know, and I think if there's things like that that we're more concerned about, I can probably put a little bit more pressure on the county to get me information. Then the less I ask them to do, mm -hmm. the quicker the response will be. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if there's like two or three of these that we just absolutely need to know, that would be easier for me to get than if I give them a list of, you know, 20. That's just. Right. You know. I think the important like the like the one like the docks in the lagoon. I mean, it's that it, that one's kind the, of the, a the, the ones that look. I mean, it's always amazing to me that people actually own things in the lagoon or out in the bay. Well, they expected to fill it. You know, 150 years from now, they'll be right on schedule. Maybe 200 years, or maybe less, with all the siltation that's happening. No, we'll all be underwater in 200 years. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true, too. Yeah, yeah, the lagoon is kind of this little balance. Siltation. Siltation or sea level, level rise, rise. Siltation, sea level rise, what's going to be. Um, and then there was this gorgeous. Yes, that was for littering signs. Littering signs. Mm -hmm. um, oh, is this, were we going to try to put something up? On Quarry Road? 
McCrary Road, yeah. Yeah, and my suggestion would be is that we put one type of sign next to, because what my, my, not being here again, but my impression is that we were looking for putting a couple of signs up. I think one near where the skateboarders use it would be a different sign than the one that would be more towards where the truck drivers are, because I think people who are skateboarders have a different level of reading, paying attention to signs than those who are. Isn't I think there, something more visual might be helpful. Isn't there also an issue when, when we uh, put the existing quarry road signs out there, <coughs> it seems to me, does anybody remember this, that they got removed because it's actually county property, not city property, so we have to be careful not to stomp on anybody's toes. Right, and Natalie has been in touch with um, Sam from the county okay. parks to try and figure part of that out. Okay, yeah. and so they're okay with well, signage? We need to talk to Fish and Wildlife too. Fish okay. and Game. Fish and Game, okay. Fish and Game. Yeah. yeah, we're not sure about beyond the paved area after that, so I need to talk to planning. Um, I need to really find out who is on that road. We also need to find out, I think, um, the area that is the ad hoc skate park, quote unquote, the drainage ditch there, who actually is responsible for that? I would actually like to do that first because I think signage is fine, but I think what's really going to help cut down the litter is a place to put it. And right now, there isn't any place. Oh, we've, also, we've been talking to Public Works about putting a couple of more garbage cans out there as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Is that even possible? Everything in the world is possible. <laughs> Because we, we actually have tried to go there before and we didn't have any luck, but that would be, I would really like, if we're going to put signs out there, I'd really like us to put a can out there so that people don't have to walk, you know, half a mile with their trash, which is the present situation. If and you start at the skateboard So I talked place. to, um, I talked to staff and he let me know who currently empties the trash cans. It's a private contractor. And he said he will need to talk to them to see what it will look like if we added two more, because we talked about adding two more, um, what would be the extra costs and things like that. Um, and this is a private contractor paid by the city of Brisbane? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess my other thought is down the road, if all of these measures don't work, what options do we have for removing that drainage? I always thought shooting people who were littering. <laughs> I'm wondering if our representative of the vast public might have something to say about this. We're talking about litter. Do you know where the skateboard park is out Quarry Road? It's not a skateboard it's not park. The park, it's a but do you know the ad hoc skateboard at the base park base of Al Canyon? The and, not, and you might know of it without ever having seen it before. Oh, can you please come to the mic? Um, as a child growing up here, I definitely, you know, went up to the quarry and tried to explore everything and everywhere you can go. Um, I haven't been up there recently, so I don't know. It's not too familiar right now. But I think, like you said, like, you know, you want people to throw away trash, but if you don't give them a trash can right then and there, they're going to be like, well, it's not near. You know, mm -hmm. you see this on school campuses and you see it in the community. So I think the first step definitely would be to place, you know, a trash bin out there so they have a place so they can't say, oh, you know, where am I going to throw it away? Well, you walk five feet and there's the trash, you know, we provide it right. for you. You know, we see that children and, you know, other individuals use that area for, you know, whatever they want to do there, but, you know, be respectful of it because it can be taken away if possible, so. Mm -hmm. What's out there now is a sort of cement, um, I don't know what you'd even call it's it. Drainage it's, culvert. It's drainage a, yeah, culvert. It's a yeah. culvert. It's a big, wide thing. And people have turned it into a skateboard park. And personally, you know, the, there shouldn't be a skateboard place there, but I personally don't care as long as it doesn't get trashy. But it is getting trashy. So, Very trashy. So that's kind of the issue. And <clears throat> that's another thing, you know, I, I remember riding my bike up there 
rollerblades or anything, a skateboard, and that being, you know, like, the hidden place. It's not like yeah. the... It's always that extra adventure that adds to the adrenaline of things. And um, definitely, you know, putting a trash can out there and telling these these individuals that, you know, this area could be, you know, taken away really fast. You know, just respect it um, for those who want to enjoy it, the, the beautiful um, beautification of it. Um, but that's all I can really say from the community standpoint is, you know, let's try and put bins out there at first and just letting people know that if this is a reoccurring problem, then, hmm. you know, actions will be will be taken to, to remove it. Any ideas how we might put the word out like that? Um, no, I don't, I don't really know how you guys get the word out to, to the community besides these meetings. Um, I don't know if things can be sent in the mail. You need another conduit. The, yeah. The, well, part of the problem we, is... We could have a conversation with, the, with them at school. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Maybe when we do the assembly at Litman, because I'm I'm get I'm just guessing it's li mostly Litman age kids that no. are doing the skateboarding. No. No, it is okay. not. It is out of towners. It is adult. It All is right. adult men from out of town. Oh. I've seen them numerous times. <clears throat> it is not kids that I recognize from Brisbane. Okay. Maybe it's bad guess. Huh. Yeah. I would have thought I would have thought it was you know some of the kids who are in Litman who are trying to not be as public. As there are said. some, I'm sure. But the majority of the people that I've actually spoken to there over the years have not been Brisbane kids. Huh. That, that makes it more challenging. Um, they haven't been kids at all. They've been adults with cars who can come up there with concrete and build little things. and do, I mean, it's been a variety of people. And... In a negative, I had a negative experience the last time I mentioned to the people that were there about picking up litter. And they just kind of were like, goody. So. Words that would not be allowed under our FCC license, are you telling me? Uh -huh. <laughs> so it is a problem, and I'm hoping that the soft approach would, will, will work. Cause I, might as well try it. I mean, we right. need to do something because it's really just getting, it has gotten it completely out of hand. Well, we'll continue to work with uh, Public Works about getting litter, about getting cans there, and then, or, you know, after we get the cans, ordering signs. Yeah. Great. And as I said, maybe the sign you put there is different from the sign you put somewhere else on the road. <clears throat> yeah, which sign do you guys like? <laughs> <laughs> or do you have other ideas? I like the, the one that looks like the Simpsons. I like that one. I like the one that litter. says, how long does it take to decompose? Thank you. Yeah, again. you know, that's a good one. I like that one. Unfortunately, I don't think being right at that skateboard area, mm -hmm. it's going to have that impact. I think further down it would. Okay. Yeah. Because I think that one is going to take a little bit more of the, somebody who's less into the moment to, to pay attention to it. Right. I kind of like the one that says, please don't litter. And if you do, there's a five hundred dollar fine, and we're going to enforce it. Well, that would be yeah. <laughs> that would be good. Have Have any of you looked at the um, "Littering is Wrong Too" campaign? Is you got to Google this one. Littering is what wrong too. So what it is, it's like there's a <clears throat> it's a California campaign against littering, and it's like shaving shaving your cat, and they have a razor or shave a cat. Littering is wrong too. <laughs> they got like humorous things like that, which I think also might make some sense in this area. Because oh what you want to do is you want to get something that's going to be grab their attention. Yeah, I mean, litter has just become a horrible problem. The sort of people that Michelle's talking about, though, I don't think they have cats. You know, oh, uh, there's other ones might... that they have on that whole list of things about littering. Okay, rocks. but one of the things oh, that just slays me is driving into Brisbane and you get to the corner where the you know the <clears throat> boards on one side and the other side and you're you know on where old county road becomes visitation mall right there there is just a ton of litter right there i mean i keep thinking okay i'm just gonna go get a bag and pick it up right right to the right in our very own heart of the town are you talking about the trees that line old county road across from the park no i'm talking those about are full of tree those are full of litter too i know but like you're driving, you know where that corner where everybody puts their political signs? Yes. Yeah. That where they removed that one tree that was dead against that wall, not the one they did mm -hmm. this 
yesterday, but the one. Oh, that one, yeah. Like right as you're driving, and here's the sign, you're about to make the curve. If you went straight into that wall, there's litter all over there. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually talking just. Yeah, I know yeah. now I'm talking just to the right of that. Those trees, I think they're like, are they myoporums or something? Yeah. Maya. Some little shrubby things. Mm -hmm. Those are full. There's like a homeless camp in there. And it's full of litter. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Okay, next item on the agenda is... So I put this on, Energy Action Plan. So this is an item that the City Council subcommittee talked to you about. Mm -hmm. And now that the, the um, draft EIR is put to bed for a couple of months. I thought it might be a good time to maybe reactivate a subcommittee that was activated years ago about trying to figure out how to do this. And my thought in the process was, you know, maybe if we have a subcommittee meeting of people who are interested in developing an energy action plan, um, having staff pull maybe half a dozen climate action plans from other cities and energy action plans from other cities to go have the subcommittee work their way through those, see which kinds of things might be of interest for us to try and move this <clears throat> forward. That was my thought, but um, I just know this is something that the, I keep hearing from council members saying, how are we doing on this? And I keep saying, we had a draft EIR. And they said, okay, we understand, but <laughs> now that it's over, I would like to right. move this forward if we can figure out a way to do it. I uh, had volunteered for that subcommittee, so. so I, I was one of the committee members, so yeah. so uh, I'm, I'm willing to continue. My, my own take on it is that um, given that the biggest contribution to greenhouse gases in Brisbane is from Highway 101. Yeah. That probably the best thing we can do is, is public education. I mean, right. I think it is, and I think what we can do is ask PG&E for a information about how much um, kilowatts and therms does Brisbane use. Mm -hmm. And then we can work on an education plan and to reduce that electricity, electric kilowatt hour and therms, and then maybe do some kind of public information to make that, make people aware mm -hmm. of how we're doing in, yeah. in that reduction. But I also think working through some other cities climate action plans and energy action plans or whatever they have for ideas on what kinds of ways they've done to reduce residential and business mm -hmm. and not trying to reinvent the wheel, not really trying to think of it oh, yeah. for ourselves. So that was my, that was in my spare time what I've been thinking. Cool. Yeah. One thing that we talked about, and I think you were at some of these meetings when we had this original subcommittee, one thing that we talked about was, was the commercial part of Brisbane, commercial users of energy, and there's all that roof space, right? Which, which every time I look at it, I think, boy, you know, solar panels on top of all that would be great. But we have this absentee landlord issue, and I have no idea how to get through that. Well, I think you know, I think if that's the goal, you know, um, we are, you know, because we have the same issue for um, other as. Michelle was saying, talking about the ULI issue and about how do we convert, you know, if we're ever going to convert Crocker Industrial Park to a different use. Uh, and staff is working on that issue of trying to figure out how do we make contact not with the brokers of the absentee landlords, but the absentee landlords themselves. Oh. And it is an issue that we're trying to, that we're trying to track down. Oh, that's we, good. I'm glad. Um, so, but I think part of it is that we need to go to the absentee landlords with a positive plan saying, here's... Okay. What you can do. So if we're looking at doing something where, you know, you know, if we want to encourage people to do solar panels, is there something as a city that we can do to encourage solar panels? Mm -hmm. Like decrease the amount that we charge them? I mean, I don't know. Okay. But we can look at other plans, see what other cities are doing, and then right. maybe, and copy them. We may want to bring uh, the Brisbane Chamber in on this. Right. Yeah, at some yeah. point. I mean, we right. did, Mitch came to a meeting or right. two, but I think and that's where he brought up the the absentee landlord. Right, but I think if we come forward with a plan ourselves and then go forward. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm stepping on Barbara. It's all right. Um, so I, I'm wondering, and maybe I'm wrongheaded here, um, but I know that most commercial leases require the leasee, the business owner, to, to provide 100% of the maintenance and building upkeep during the period of their lease. That's pretty normal. And it would be the businesses themselves who actually pay the PG&E bill and would 
benefit from solar panels. Yeah. So do we need to reach out to the businesses or do we need to reach out to the well the, the the owners of the buildings would only allow you know they'd have to allow something to get built on their building okay the leasee who has a three or five year lease on a building would Might not be not looking be interested. at okay. interested in doing something that's going to give you a 20, 20 year, year return yeah but return. what you can do is if you're the owner mm -hmm. is if you do put the solar panels on your building mm -hmm. and you can still charge and rate that would be slightly higher okay. because you now are able to show that you got a lower electric bill. Mm -hmm. So I mean, ultimately, it's all going to work through. And I think, but I think part of it is that we look through what other cities have done. Say, yeah, these are the things that these other cities have done that we want to do. And then how do we go about doing them? And then moving and step through there. But I think if we get, because there's a lot of them that have been done now. I think when we started this four or five years ago, when we tried, there weren't very many out there. Yeah, yeah I understand there are a lot more the thinking now. now. Thank you, Stuart. So, so just one more thing on that. Um, do we know what's going on with Energy Upgrade California? Man, I just got a phone call from them. Because when we worked on energy strategy before, that was, you know, it's yeah. sort of yeah, got so let's, more folded into that bigger right. Um, let's. I'll, I'll have somebody do. I'll, I'll ask Caroline to do some research with Natalie. Do some research. Okay. On that. Because I, I, I know something just came through my office, and I just can't remember. I forwarded you and Natalie something, but this was maybe two or three months ago because yeah. I was still on their mailing list, and I really have not looked into it. Um, no, I, I guess it's still alive, but I'm not sure what they're doing. It's, a, it's kind of alive. I think it, there's stuff that are going on at the state level, and I think it was more from the state legislature that I was seeing something, oh, okay. trying to deal with that. Okay. Yeah, so, I'd like to know what's going on. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll give an update at the next meeting on that. Okay. I also want to uh, still work on the individual home energy action plan. Right. I mean, I think that's oh. I think that's what the committee would do is look at what other cities have done for businesses and homes, and then we'll steal the best. Yeah. That's, or the most appropriate, maybe not the best, but the most appropriate. Okay. The significance of Energy Upgrade California was that it was a program to help homeowners. Oh yeah. Do that. No, so. I came to their present the presentation that the OSEC hosted. Yeah. So did I. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we need to do that again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that'll be on the agenda next time as well. Uh, staff updates from previous meeting. Ms. So I just, I had a to-do list for myself and just kind of looked at a couple of things. Um, so I'll just go down the list. So about the rental agreement for the park. Um, so Nancy is working on that. Um, that that's to change the, uh, how people treat the trees. Oh. <laughs> Since we just planted new ones, we want to make sure they're not abused, abused, pinataized, or otherwise. <laughs> okay. Um, I've also been in touch with um, Environmental Health from San Mateo County, and so they're going to give us amounts of fuels that are being stored because I remember we were also looking into that. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, our our information, the way we keep our information, and the way they keep our information is different. So. Um, I had to send them like 70 different address addresses and they said oh this will take us a little bit longer than normal so it's just kind of waiting on that now um, okay. let's see so I spoke to the quarry operator and he did talk with littering um, he did talk about littering to his staff and the truckers and things like that so they're they're aware of that um, I got in t contact with UPC because I remember someone mentioned, can we ask them to clean up the road? And they said they don't own anything on, on Quarry Road, so they said, you know, basically no. <coughs> they said they appreciate our efforts in keeping things clean. It's kind of their response. Wait, we want them to clean up their road. They said they don't, that was their well, response. You're, 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 so you're talking about tunnel, not Yeah, the tunnel road. Oh, tunnel road. We'll get in contact with them again. Again. <laughs> Although, as you know, Clay has this conversation with Jonathan on a regular basis about And it's obviously ineffective if there's still that much garbage out there. Just saying we this is not this is something that is on that is a regular conversation that we yeah. have. <laughs> as effective or as ineffective as it may be, it's not due to lack of conversation. I understand that. But you don't pick up litter by conversation either, is my impression. No, and Recology has actually done a really good job in response to our request that 
they clean up that area along Beatty and, and yeah and you know it might help a little bit I'm not quite sure what's going on with the um, uh, solid waste franchise agreements but that may I don't know if that's part of the you know that may be a potential of the solid waste franchise agreements as well yeah I'm sure okay I don't know I, I don't know but I can check on that too okay excellent um, so Natalie you're gonna go back to them about cleaning up tunnel room We'll, we'll, we'll talk to Clay about it. Okay, good. Oh, I, I just thought uh, Natalie would love calling them and saying, well, I was going to say, talk up your garbage. <laughs> us calling them and having Clay talk to them are yeah. different. I just thought Natalie might have more influence. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I'll send Caroline after them. Okay. She's really um, good at this stuff. Approval of minutes. One change. Mm -hmm. uh, it's under item eight. Review of last year's work plan. Um, it's not the sustainability committee has been placed on hold, although mm -hmm. we haven't had a meeting lately. It's the, the green building ordinance committee. <coughs> That's kind of marking time right now. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, w I wouldn't say that it's on hold. It's just that we're waiting for um, clarification on the changes in Title 24. Right. Because a lot of the changes um, were actually more aggressive than what we were proposing, Brisbane go on top of the old Title Twenty Four. So, right. so it's it's. I, if I'm not so, mistaken, they're going to wait until July. the summer. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we can. No, just, just yeah. So how about we just take out that sentence: the sustainability committee is going to place on hold, and then just say consultant was, uh, um, is due, it's due to report about code changes, and then Maybe Manos building says the new code have been postponed sense. until July. Yeah. Maybe so, building code changes yeah. so it's clear what it's about. Okay. That was all. Yeah. Um, I have two little things I'd like to pick up from our previous conversation, if that's all right. Mm-hmm. Um, one is that we lost Sean on the community education subcommittee. So um, at s probably next meeting, I think we would like to, um, I would like us to discuss whether or not we're going to replace that person on the community education subcommittee. Um, I assume so. But uh, I kind of hoping Michael Abney will take that role. Sure, Which, maybe, huh? Well, what we could do is we could bring back all the committees that you have, and anybody who mm -hmm. wants to change yeah. committees. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is, is on the tree issue. I was just as I was reading through the minutes here. And the IFGU donated seven trees. Could we potentially work with someone like the IFGU um, or Friends of the Urban Forest to get subsidized or um, discounted or free trees for the replanting of the industrial park? Most of the time they would be 15-gallon trees, though. Would that be... That's fine. You don't want to plant a tree that's much bigger than that anyway because they go on a lot of shock if they're much bigger than that. Yeah, I know most of the time these places, they'll have they'll give free trees, just the owner needs to apply for it. It's a simple application, so I can find out if they're running something like that. Yeah, maybe, we need, maybe what we need to do then is coordinate the um, expense and process, a packet with, that it coordinates the expense and removal process with a how, here's how to get a cheap tree. <laughs> Yeah, process. That's, a, that's a great idea. We may not just want to get cheap trees. We may want to get trees that will thrive. So I, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. we need to. We, need we still to need to figure out what those bit. trees are. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, absolutely. I wasn't. I, sorry. I the way I said that <laughs> seemed to indicate that I wanted to any get tree that process. Any old tree. Just that was not the case. I, I understand that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Good. You gotta be you got me, boy, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Really. Okay. <laughs> Jumped on. So, is there a move to uh, approve the minutes? Is there, there, there is one. I still move. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, um, our next meeting date is? April. What? April what? My guess is March 31st turns into a Monday, so April 2nd would be a Wednesday. My guess is April 9th. Anybody who's got a calendar? I do. Looking. Did I get it right? Yep. That's the second Wednesday. Yep. Okay. So April 9th is our next meeting at 6.30. Is that it? Oh, that's it. Move to adjourn.
Thank you. Second. Thank you. Second. Oh, I had one thing I wanted to talk about on the polystyrene band, but we can do that next time. The yes. what? The polystyrene band. Yeah, that'll be on the thing next we time. We can do that next time. What, what about it? Um, well...